G'day. Today I'd like to give a little bit of history to probability theory. And in some sense, the systematic treatment of probability theory that we know today can be pinpointed one particular year in our history, namely the year 1654. It all began with a French nobleman, Chevalier de Marais, who asked a question. It was a question about the problem of points. Now what do I mean by that? It was this sort of situation. So imagine two friends each lay down $100 in a friendly best of seven tennis game. But Rain interrupts play after just four games. Just four games are played. And Albert had won three of the games and Bill had won one of the games. So they were going to go for best of seven, but they stopped after four games with three and one. Annoying. Okay, but the question is, how should the $200 in the pot be divvied between the two players so as to properly reflect the likelihoods of each winning. Okay, so Chevalier de Marais was actually stuck on this problem, so he decided to write a letter to one of the best mathematicians at the time in France, namely Blaise Pascal. And Blaise Pascal was very intrigued by this. He said, ooh, this is very curious. There's something deep going on here. And he wrote about to one of his colleagues, the other best mathematician at the time, Pierre de Fermat. And the two of them really analyzed this sort of problem and started developing the systematic theory of probability that we know today, at least know in the West. So in some sense, you can say probability theory as we know it began in 1654. Now, of course, people have been thinking about these ideas, the games of chance, and it comes up in gambling for millennia and so forth. A century earlier, an Italian mathematician, Cardano, actually did think about ideas like this but he never published them. And of course, mankind has been analyzing chance, games of chance for a long, long time, but this was the first systematic treatment as we know it today. So, what I'd like to do with you today is actually answer this question. Actually, I don't know how to answer it. I'll give four possible answers and we'll see what we think about each of those answers in turn. So I'm gonna give four different answers and let's do it right now. And of course, I'm going to invite you to come up with a fifth answer and a sixth answer and a seventh answer. It's so fun to think deeply about these sorts of things. All right, so four different answers to this problem of points. Here goes. Seven games about to be played, interrupted up to four. Answer number one. Okay. So the situation right now is that Albert's won three games and Bilbus won one game and then we have to cancel because of rain. Naive answer would be, you know what? Just give each person their money back. Give Albert his $100 back, give Bilbo his $100 back and be done with it. Seems fair, just come back and play another day. All right, that's one possible answer. I think uh, people object because it's not actually answering the question. The question says, okay, do something more interesting than that, please. Please divvy the pot to properly reflect the likelihoods of each winning. Just ignore the likelihoods of each winning right there. Completely ignore the question, not a satisfactory answer. All right, now answer number one, we won't do that. Let's do something that's more about the chances of winning. So let's start over again with answer number two. This time let's actually look at what we've got so far. Here's the data we have so far. They've played four games, Albert's won three, Bilbert's won one, so they've won, so they've been, uh, the game's won come in a three to one ratio which then suggests maybe we should divide the $200 in a three to one ratio. That is divided to four parts of $50 and give three of those parts to Albert, which would be $150, and one of those parts to Bilbert, which is $50. That seems to be more relevant to the, to the uh, situation at hand. That could be one possible answer. Great, one possible answer to the problem. But if you think about this, Albert's probably going to complain. He's gonna say, hang on, hang on, I was on the verge of winning. I was about to win a fourth game. It was about to be Albert gets four and Bilbo gets one, in which case I would get the full $200 in that situation. Four games out of seven means I've got the win and zero dollars goes to Bilbo. And look, that's what I would have earned. $200 to nothing, that's not a four to one ratio. Ratio is irrelevant right there. Therefore, ratios should be irrelevant there as well. We cannot think in terms of ratios, at least not in that naive way. All right, I think Albert's got a point. We can't just you know, choose ratios in one place and not ratios in the other. Let's think about ratios in a very serious way then. So here comes my answer number three. All right, answer number three. So let's do a deeper analysis of this setup and let's do it with garden paths. So here's a situation. So imagine we do the situation many times that they might, these players will come back and someday eventually go into a fifth game 
They might need to go on to a sixth game. They might need to go on to a seventh game. Let's analyze the results in that scenario. So here goes. So right now, let me clean my board a bit more. Let's draw a garden path. We come along, come along, come along. So right now, we at the situation where Albert has won three, Bilbert has won one game. All right, so they need to play another game, a fifth game. Now there's two options, either Albert will win or Bilbert will, Bilbert will win. So let's split this into two with Albert winning and Bilbert winning. Now, if Albert wins, it'll now be four games for Albert, one game for Bilbert. Four out of seven, that's the best, we can stop there. We know Bilbert's won, so we might as well send him straight, uh, Albert's won, so we might as well send him straight to the Albert house where A gets $200. So if he wins that game, four out of seven is enough for the win, give him the $200. If Bilbert wins, however, we're just gonna be in the situation where Albert still's got three games, Bilbert's now only got, has now got two games under his belt. They need to play another game, they need to play a sixth game. All right, so they play a sixth game, which gives two options, either Albert wins or Bilbert wins. Great, oh, if Albert wins, great, he's won four games to two, four out of seven's a win, give him the $200. But if Bilbert wins, we're now in the situation of Albert's won three games, Bilbert's won three games, and they need to play a seventh game. In which case, two options, either Albert wins and he gets the $200, four games to three, and then finally Bilbert wins, it'll be three games to four, so he goes to the Bilbert house now, where Bil Bilbert gets $200. Beautiful, beautiful, in which case, the B house, there we are, there's the scenario. Great, so there is a garden path system that analyzes this game beautifully, and now the question is, what are the likelihoods of ending up in the B house or ending up in the A house? Well. To figure it out, let's draw the area model. But um, let me give myself a bit more space. Hopefully this problem's in your head now, because let me erase this, and I can draw the space. Let's draw me some space here, to be good. A big rectangle, here comes the area model. All right, so here we go, what's going on? First of all, we split into two. Uh, half the time, Albert wins. Half the time, we go into another game. But if we go into another game, it splits in two, with half the time, Albert winning, and half the time, we go into another game. We split into two, with half the time, the Albert winning, or the other half, Bilbert winning, finally. So now I can see the proportion of times Bilbert wins, seems much easier to look at that one. I can see, like imagine, four little blocks here like this, and I can see that Bilbert is gonna be one eighth of the whole square. One eighth chance of winning, seven eighths chance of winning. So it looks like we should be splitting the money into a seven to one ratio. The likelihood is a seven eighth to one eighth, seven to one ratio. So let's divide the $200 into eight parts. Uh, so it's $25 for one part. Give Albert seven of those $25, $175 and give Albert uh, one of those parts, $25, oops, $25. $175, $25, beautiful. That seems like a much fairer split. So it actually reflects what really could happen and there's the likelihoods of B winning and versus A winning. But I think Albert's gonna complain about this. And I think rightly so, because look, as we go through this garden path, we assume there's a 50% chance Albert will win, 50% chance Bilbert will win, all the way through, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%. But Albert might argue, no. Look at the evidence. Look, I've won three games, Bill's won one. Clearly, I'm the better player. In fact, the data says I win 75% of the time. So it shouldn't be a 50-50 split, it should be a 75-25 split. In which case, it's gonna change the analysis and I want, a, I want a recount, please. All right, so we'll redo the analysis, but this time we'll follow Albert's suggestion for a fourth solution, solution number four, which really reflects the data we have so far, namely, Three quarters of the time, Albert will win the first game, and one quarter of the time, Bill will win the, second, the first game. For the next game, three quarters of the time, Albert will win, one quarter of the time, Bill will win. For this game, three quarters of the time, Albert will win, one quarter of the time, Bill will, will win. Okay, so we need a weighted garden path. Great, there are the weights. Which means I need to adjust my area model to reflect those weights. So let me draw the square again. So this time, come down to this game, the fifth game, and we see it splits into three quarters with A winning, and one quarter of the time going on to the sixth game. When we come to the sixth game, three quarters of the time A wins, and one quarter of the time uh, we go on to another game. And then the final game, the seventh game, three quarters of the time A wins, and one quarter of the time B finally gets the $200. So now, now, the proportion of times B wins is this. 
which is some fraction of the whole square. So how am I going to think my, through that, my way through that fraction? Well, that's one quarter of that piece. Actually, it's one quarter of one quarter. Actually, it's one quarter of one quarter of one quarter of the whole thing. A quarter of the quarter of the quarter of the quarter of the whole thing. Quarter of the quarter of the quarter is uh, 1 64th. Philip will win, not one eighth the time. He'll win 1 64th the time in this weighted way of thinking, which means Albert wins 63 64th the time, which means these numbers here are wrong. We need to divide the $200 into 64 parts and split the money for 63 parts go to Albert, one part goes to Bilbo. So I believe $200 divided by 64 is $3.12.5 .12 to uh, Albert, one part of them, and 63 parts makes uh, the rest of it. So it'd be $1.96.87.5. Uh, now I have no idea what these men are going to do about the half cents here, but that's their problem. But basically, give $196 to Albert and three dollars to Bilbert using data that reflects what's gone on so far. That's a fourth solution. But this time, this time I think Bilbert is going to object because he says, okay, okay, I'll grant Albert's data here that he's going to win three quarters of the time uh, and I win one quarter of the time given that data. But look, next game here, clearly I've improved my playing. I win two fifths of the time. These weights are wrong right here. And if we get to this part of the game, clearly I win half the time. So those weights are wrong. I need to adjust the weights as we go along, in which case we're going to change this picture yet again. All right, so there's a fifth way to think about this, and I invite you to come up with the actual numbers that go to each gentleman in that case. Can you figure out the numbers that will go? If we do the weighted, uh, the, the varying weights on this graph. And then maybe, maybe there's another objection to that solution, in which case we need a sixth solution, or a seventh, or an eighth. So I'm going to invite you to keep thinking about this fabulous problem because it really did spur on all of probability theory as we know it today. It's so deep and so rich and so fun. So see me how many different ways you can come up in figuring out how to analyze this particular problem of points. It is such great stuff.